Example 165. Find S squared for the following data and state the largest deviation we would expect between any of the actual data points in our least square line. Okay, so we're given some numbers here. It's the female height in meters, right? So this is the female's height in meters in the X column. And then we have the ideal height of their mates. So in other words, these females are commenting on what they believe the ideal height of their mate would be. We're trying to see if there's a connection between the two. If we can create a model that will try to predict um, based on the female's height is being questioned, what she'll think her ideal mate's height is. I have a picture of Tom Cruise and Nicole Kibben here because um, normally women prefer guys who are taller. Tom Cruise is famously shorter than Nicole Kidman, Kid, Kidman sorry, by a good amount. All right, so let's look at the work that's involved here. You know, our first step is to uh, perform all these calculations that take a long time, and I did that in other videos, so I think that maybe to save some time on this problem to get to the core idea of the problem, we'll just uh, look at these calculations which I've already taken the time to do. So remember, you have x and y, we sum those columns, that's all we do. Then we square all the x values and we sum that column. We square all the y values and we sum that column, we get a sum here. And then we take the product of each of these and we get that column. What we also want to do is to take the time to just count up how many original pairs of data we had. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to make a little note here that n is five. Okay, so now the first thing once you have all that work done that I just did, we have to go ahead and come up with these values. So we'll need the sum of squares for the x value, the sum of squares for the y values, and we'll need the sum of squares for the mixed term, the xy value. The formula, just remember, this one's kind of a classic one. It's the xy product minus the sum of x times the sum of y over n. And these are similar, right? It's the sum of, here it's xy because it's xy. Here it'll be y times y, which is y squared, minus the sum of y times the sum of y, or you could say the sum of y squared. And then you have divided by n. And then you finally have the sum of x squared minus the sum of x times the sum of x. And that, of course, will also be divided by n. OK, so from there, let's go ahead and do the work. So we're going to plug in the numbers to get these values. And I'll put those numbers up there, but I'll do the work down here. So let's do the work for SSXX. If we do that work, we're going to have to take the values that I've already come up with here. So let's go ahead and put this over here now so we can look at it as we do the work. So if I look at the sum of the x squared column, I see that it's 14.1042. Then it'll be minus the sum of x times itself, so 8.38 times itself, 8.38 squared, divided by the n, and the n is 5, as we mentioned. OK, our next step then, I'm just going to fill all these in, and then we'll do the crunching of the numbers just to you know, kind of make it more like an assembly line, right? So I'll work that out. Now, for the next piece, SSYY, we're going to do the sum of the y squareds. That number is 16.8486 minus the sum of y squared. That's going to be 9.16 squared divided by 5. Then finally, the last calculation is going to be the mixed term, or the sum of the product of the two values, x and y. That's going to give you 15.4143. Then we're going to have minus, and now in this case it's the product of the sum of x and the sum of y. So we'll have 8.38 times 9.16, and all of that will be divided by 5 again. All right, now it's time to use the calculator on this. Let's use our calculator to work out all these important details. So for the first one, it's 14.1042 minus 8.38 squared divided by 5. And when we finish that, we get this answer 0 0.05932. 932. That is the sum of square for the x's. Let's continue and do the one for y now. So we'll have 16.8486 minus 9.16 squared divided by 5. And when you're done, you get 0 0.06748. And then one last piece here, 15.4143, minus 8.38 times 9.16 divided by 5.
and we get the answer 0 0.06214. Okay, so there are our values all laid out for us. Now, from there we have to calculate the slope first, so we're going to go ahead and do that in our next little piece here. The slope estimator beta 1 hat is the mixed term xy over the sum of squares for the x term. And when we plug those numbers in according to what we calculated, it's 0 0.0624, 0 06, sorry, 214, 214, over the values for x, which is 0 0.05932. And when you're done with that, let's see what you get. So we'll have 0 0.06. 214 divided by 0 0.05932 and we end up with 1.04753838 uh, so 388 so I've rounded off here eventually because that's a lot of decimal places I'm really going to store this though in my calculator as x so I have that number because this is an important number for our calculation so I don't want to round it too soon but of course, at this point, that's plenty of decimals to keep. You don't need to store it actually after you have so many decimals. All right, our next step of the process then is to come up with SSE. And SSE has a special formula. It's SSYY minus the slope estimator we just calculated times the mixed term SSXY. And the YY part is 0 0.06748. And then minus the number we just got for the slope. Now I'm not going to write that whole decimal in. I'm just going to use the symbol for it if you don't mind. And then I'm going to put the mixed term next to it. The mixed term is 0 0.06214. Okay, so that's it. And when you work all that out, let's see what that gives us. So I'm going to have 0 0.06748 minus the value I stored in my calculator, the slope, times 0 0.06214. 214. And when I hit enter, I get approximately 0 0.002385947. So that is your SSE approximately. Now, with that number, all I have to do to finish the calculation that I'm interested in here to figure out what S squared is, is I take the SSE and I divide by n minus 2. And that will give me the variance here that I'm looking for, or the estimator of the variance, I should say. Now, I have that number in my calculator, so I'm just going to hit divide by. What's n minus 2? It would be divide by 3 in this case, right? Because 5 minus 2 is 3. And when I'm done, I end up with the answer. And it's in scientific notation in the calculator, if you see that there. Don't get worried. Just e to the minus 4 means you move the decimal point over four positions, which will end up giving you three zeros before you get to 795, 795. So that is your S squared value, and it's a quite tiny value, it's a small one, but that is your variance. All right, now from here, what we're going to do is to answer the second part of the question. The second part of the question asked us, let's take a look at that. It said, state the large deviation we would expect between any of the actual data points and our least squared line. So what we're going to think about is this idea of the empirical rule. And since we know the error term is uh, normally distributed, or at least that's one of our assumptions, that the error term is normally distributed, because of that, what we're going to go ahead and say is that we can take simply this idea that two standard deviations under the bell curve captures approximately 95% of the data. So what we want to say then is all we have to do to solve this problem when you're asked this question is to take your S squared and produce S by taking the square root of it. And that will lead to s. Now, for us, our s squared number worked out to be 0 0.000795 approximately, right? And we're going to take the square root of that, and that's going to give us approximately what s is, right? OK, so let's do that. And I still have that number in my calculator, so I'm just going to raise it to the half power. And that's going to allow me to get the square root. It's the same as the square root. So the answer works out to be approximately 0 0.0282, let's say, just to use three decimal places, 0 0.0282. Now, how do we interpret this value? Well, we're going to use the idea that under the bell curve, two standard deviations captures 95% of the data. And so when we say, well, what would we expect you know, would be the largest deviation? Well, you could say argument-wise, you know, 95% of the cases will be within a distance of 
two standard deviations. That's two S's, right? And if we multiply two times that number, again, I have that in my calculator, so I'm just going to do times two. If I do that, I end up with the answer 0 0.0564. Now remember, this is in meters, right? Because the original measurements were in meters. So 0 0.06 meters, let's say. And so what we're saying is that, hey, when you actually make a prediction, when you provide a prediction from the equation of the least squares regression line, when you make a prediction based on that, we're saying that the actual data points will lie within, you know, 95% of the time, they'll lie within a distance from that prediction of 0 0.0564. In other words, we're not going to miss by very much. We're only going to miss by 0 0.05 of a meter, right? So that's basically a pretty small difference from our prediction and our actual number. And the reason why is because remember the number that comes from our prediction equation should be the average value, right? And so the, the points in reality will actually vary around that average. The error points, you know, will end up, you know, the error between the prediction and the other one and the number we actually um, find in the real world will try, probably be, you know, 0 0.0564 units apart at most for 95% of the cases where we make predictions. So this is just giving us kind of a range that we can count on. So remember, when you're asked this phrase, all you have to do is find S and then take twice of that. And this will mean that 95% of our predictions will be within this distance from the actual value that we see in the real world, right? So when it says state the largest deviation we would expect, just do two times S. If you have S squared, take the square root, get S, multiply by two, and that's the largest deviation you would expect to occur 95% of the time, right? Now there are some cases, 5% of the time, that we might see values that are further than that away from our prediction, but the general idea is that overwhelmingly they'll be within this distance from the actual number we predicted. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense and uh, we've answered the question.